In this video, you will learn how to build an industrial AI agent from scratch using Python and the Langchain framework. We'll start by exploring the simulated page plant environment we'll be working with. And then step by step, I'll show you how to create Python functions to access data from an OPC UA server and a timescale DB database of our plant. Expose those functions as tools that the AI agent can use to make intelligent decisions and then use Glode large language model to build a long chain tool calling AI agent. Before we dive in, let me show you a quick demo of the finished project and then we'll go through exactly how to build it. So here I've built a batch plant production assistant AI agent. It can assess whether to proceed with production based on material availability in the tanks, equipment availability, and product recipes stored in our database. My name is Kudzai Mandi Teresa, and I regularly publish tutorials on industrial data and AI on this channel. So if you're new here, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of the videos. This is part one of a five part series on how to build agentic AI for industrial systems. All the code for this tutorial is available on the GitHub link down in the description below. Now here's a hypothetical scenario. Now imagine you are starting a production shift. The main question is, can we successfully produce X batches of product A? Traditionally, you'd have to manually check raw materials in the tanks, walk over to each machine to verify its status and cross reference recipe information. This process obviously is slow and it is prone to error. Our goal is to automate this. We will build an AI agent that lets us ask in plain English, do we have enough resources for X batches of product A? The agent will then connect to our factory's data systems, gather all the necessary information, provide a clear go no go decision, and then explain why it reached that conclusion. While this is a simplified scenario, the principles you will learn here are the foundation for tackling much more complex industrial problems. Now, let me show you what we're working with here. So I've set up a simulated batch plant that's actually pretty representative of what you'd find in a real facility. We have three storage tanks that hold our raw materials, a mixer that combines these materials according to our recipes, a reactor where the actual chemical processing happens, and finally a filling machine that packages our finished product. And we're exposing all the real-time data from all our equipment using an OPC UA server. Now let me show you data from the OPC UA server of this plant simulation. And to do that, I'll use my process OPC UA browser to connect to my simulated plant OPC UA endpoint. And you can see here, we've got the live value for silo or tank level one, showing exactly how much material is in this tank. And same applies for tank two and tank three. And we also have equipment states. So here you can see this is my mixer state, which is an integer that tells us whether each machine is running, idle, or down for maintenance. Same applies for the reactor and the filler. Next, we have a timescale DB database that stores static product information. We've got three key tables here, a products table, a product recipes table that tells us exactly what materials we need for each product and a raw materials table. Okay, now that we understand our environment, let's build an AI agent to interact with it. Before we can build the AI part of our agent, we need simple Python functions to communicate with our data sources. Think of these as the agent's basic senses or capabilities. So now I'm on my Visual Studio code here. I have a Python script called batch plant functions that acts as our OPC UA client. As you can see, it uses the async UA library to connect to the server. It defines the server endpoint and the specific node IDs for our tank levels and machine states. And it has two key functions, get material availability, which reads and returns the current levels of tanks one, two, and three, and get machine states, which returns to us the operational status of each piece of equipment. Let me run the script so you can see it in action. So as you can see, we're getting live readings from each tank, and we can see 
the operational status of our mixer, reactor, and filler. And if you notice here, I have an enumeration to map our machine states to these descriptions. Now, the second script is called batch plant storage, and this one reads data from our timescale DB database. The key function here is get product details, which takes a product name and returns exactly how much of each material we need to produce one batch of that product, plus it tells us which tanks contains those materials. Now let's test it. And as you can see, it returns the required materials and which tanks they come from. Now that we have verified our data access works, let's talk about how our AI agent is actually going to function. Now think of this as a smart pipeline that processes information step by step to reach a decision. Here is how that workflow operates. First, you give it a natural language input, which contains the number of batches you want to produce and the name of the product. The agent then queries the database to retrieve the recipe and figure out the total material requirements. Next, it sends a request to the OPC UA server to check material levels in each tank and verify that all our machines are available and not down for maintenance. Finally, it compares what we need versus what we have and makes a decision giving you a clear go or no go answer with detailed reasoning. Now at the heart of this system is a large language model and we are using Claude from Anthropic for this tutorial. The LLM acts as the brain interpreting your natural language input and orchestrating the entire workflow. But here's the thing, Claude or any LLM doesn't naturally know how to talk to OPC UA server or databases. That's where our Python functions come in we are going to transform them into tools that the LLM can call whenever it needs to retrieve data. And critically, we need a prompt template that gives the agent clear instructions about its role, what tools it has available, and how it should behave. This is what ensures we get consistent, accurate responses every time. All right, let's start building the agent. First, let me show you the libraries you will need. So you will need Langchain Anthropic for cloud integration and Langchain Community for the core Langchain tools. We're still using Async OPC UA and the PostgreSQL library. And I'm also using Pydantic, which is going to help us format our outputs in a really clean way. Now, Langchain is a framework that's specifically designed to simplify the development of LLM powered applications like the agent we're building. So it's going to handle a lot of the complexity for us which means we can focus on the actual functionality of our AI agent. So the first step in building our agent is to convert our Python functions into tools that the AI can use. So I've created a file here called tools.py for this purpose. What we're doing here is importing our batch plant functions and batch plant storage scripts, and then using Langchain's tool class to wrap them. Each function becomes a tool with a clear name and description that helps the LLM understand when and how to use it. Langchain tools expect synchronous functions, but our OPC UA functions are asynchronous. So I've created synchronous wrappers that handle this conversion. You might not need this if your data access functions are not async. And as I have discovered, LLMs sometimes try to pass arguments to tools that don't need them. For example, our OPC UA methods don't take any arguments, they just return current values. So I have added args and quarks to the wrapper functions to gracefully ignore any unexpected arguments the LLM might try to pass. Okay, so now for the main application. Now in my main file, I start by importing all the necessary components. I'm using best model from Pydantic to define our output structure, chart anthropic from Langchain anthropic for our LLM, and various prompt and passing utilities from Langchain. The key imports here are the tool calling agent from langchain.agents, which gives us an agent with the built-in ability to call tools, and agent executor, which actually executes the functions since the LLM itself just provides instructions on what tools to call. Next, I define exactly how I want my output structured using Pydantic. So as you can see here, I want a clear decision, yes or no, detailed reasoning explaining that decision, the actual material availability data, machine states, 
and a list of which tools were used. This structured output makes it much easier to use the agent's response in other applications. And then here I create an instance of chat Anthropic, specifying that I want to use a specific version of Claude. You will need to get an API key from Anthropic and add it to your environment variables for this to work. Now comes the really important part, which is the prompt template. This is where we give the agent its instructions. We tell it exactly what its job is, which is to determine if we can complete a production run. We explain what tools it has available and what each one does. We specify the format we want for the output and we include any special rules or edge cases it should handle. After setting up the prompt, I put all our tools into an array and create the actual tool calling agent, passing in the LLM, the prompt, and the tools. And then I wrap it in an agent executor, which is responsible for actually running the functions when the LLM decides they need to be called. And then here I'm just extracting the JSON from the response. And then here on my main function, I'm going to prompt the user to enter what product and number of patches they want to produce. And then I run the agent, extract JSON from the response, pass it into our Pydantic module to structure the response nicely, and then print out the response. So now let's go ahead and run our complete AI agent system and see the response. Okay, so as you can see, the agent has given us the response. So let's go through it. So as you can see here, we've got the production assessment results. First of all, the decision, yes, you can produce three batches of product A. And then we've got the reasoning here. For three batches of product A, you need, and then it does its calculation, how much of like material is required, how much material is required for the product. And then it says all materials are sufficient and all machines are operational none in false state. So sufficient materials is true. And then it gives me the machine states. We've got the mixer state running, our reactor is currently idle. And then we've got the filler state, which is also running. And then it also gives me the material availability. You can see here, we've got the tank one material, one level, 8,000. We've got the tank two material level, 13,000 and 32,000. And then if we check with our ignition, SCADA system, you can see that it's actually giving us an accurate indication of the current uh, availability of the materials. Now, the air agent we just built works, but there is a catch. It's entirely dependent on the cloud large language model, which is hosted in the cloud on Anthropic servers. And for some industrial use cases, that's not ideal. Concerns around cost, data privacy and latency often require these systems to run locally at the industrial edge. So in part two, I'll show you how to deploy a local LLM on your own hardware and run the entire AI agent system within your environment.